Hi, First Prez family. We are doing something different today. This is Mary Kay, Associate Pastor for Congregational Life. Um, we're having a, a Zoom talk to you today. We have been teaching a course, a workshop at the church for six years now called Final Gift, uh, Living Fully, Dying Well. And um, this workshop <laughs> covers um, medical, legal, emotional, spiritual uh, things that we, we all need to face in our life. Uh, oftentimes we have people come to this workshop because they're taking care of an aging parent. But what we have learned over the years is that everybody who comes to this workshop realizes that there is so much that they can learn for themselves. I have been receiving some phone calls in this um, season that we are in right now where people are wanting to um, check to see that they have their affairs in order. They want to know uh, what do they need to do to prepare uh, for the end of life. And some people have started that conversation saying it feels like a morbid thing to talk about. And I'm quick to say, nope, it is not at all. It's a necessary and what a gift it is for yourself and for your loved one. So I have invited um, two of our uh, teachers, you're in the you're in here, Marsha. <laughs> you're Marsha Williams and Judy Jameson, and Judy is going to share with us today about some of the things that we discuss in our workshop, with the hopes that this could um, just give us a little bit of information um, at this time. So, welcome, Judy. I'm glad that you are here, and I'll turn it over to you now. Well, first, I'd like to congratulate you on tuning in because I think that this is a tough subject and um, one that we all eventually have to deal with. Um, I have been working in palliative care as a volunteer for 10 years at MCV or VCU Health, depending on how old you are, it, you use the terms differently. Um, and as a, pro as, as a consequence, I have read a good bit about end of life. And between Marsha and I coming to Mary Kay, we started this workshop. Um, we thought that it might be helpful since some of you are contacting Mary Kay to just take some of the simpler um, elements of that workshop and bring them to you in this format and by email where you can click on the link and you will find an advanced directive. You will find resources for talking to your family on this subject and thinking about this subject for yourselves. And then at last, there is an article that I think is one of the best uh, in terms of helping you think through the consequences of decisions you make long before you become ill. So uh, that is sort of the background for where we're gonna move forward uh, today. One of the first questions is, um, you know, when should you begin doing work on end of life? And one of my favorite quotes is by Janet Tenno, which is, it's always too early until it's too late. So we don't wanna wait till it's too late. And maybe today is just as good a day as any for you to begin to think about this. And the first place that I would suggest you start is with the conversation starter kit. You will see the link in the email. When you print it off, it will look like this. There are um, 11 pages in this document. You certainly should read it all. But what I would suggest is that you focus on the pages four to six, which tells, asks you questions about how you would like your last days to be. And once you figure that out, then you can write an advanced directive that tells your friends, your family, and your loved ones what your wishes are. If you don't know them to start with, it's a little bit hard to write an advanced directive. The second link in that email is a link to the Virginia uh, advanced directive. This is a new format that has not been around for very long. 
In fact, since our workshop last October, this has been revised. It is 10 pages long, which sounds formidable, but it's very comprehensive. And I think if you start at the beginning, read all the way through, and then go back and begin to fill in the blanks, you will find it's quite um, user friendly. The primary reason that you choose to have an advanced directive is to specify in writing who you want your healthcare proxy to be. That's the person that if you cannot speak for yourself, that's the person who's going to advocate for you in an emergency. So choosing that person, writing it in this format, talking to that person about what your wishes are and asking them to keep um, your advanced directive handy so that they can advocate for you and show that they are your medical power of attorney, your medical advocate, is very helpful when the time comes. Because what you want to do is plan when you have time to think about it, not trying to implement this plan when you're panicked with an illness. The last thing on the list in that email is this article by Katie Butler. She's actually written um, a book, actually two, but this is an article that appeared in the Wall Street Journal in, in 2017. And I think it does a really nice job of talking you through sort of a roadmap, if you will, to the process of moving towards the end of life and preparing for that. I think that's just about all I have to say. Mary Kay, can I, can I kick it back to you? You certainly can, Judy. Thank you so much. That is such helpful information and reminds me that I need to get in and, and do some updating myself and we'll do that. We hope this is helpful for you. Um, the links are below and we are making ourselves available. If you have questions, you can email me directly. If we get enough information or requests um, for that people would like to have further conversations, we are willing to do, to do whatever we can to kind of help in this time. So we hope this is helpful. Um, I am most grateful for these two women and for the things that they have done with me and for our church congregation. Know that we care deeply about you and we wish you the very best this day. So we're gonna sign out for now but thanks for joining us. Bye.